Hi friends, welcome to another photo walk. I wanted to preface this photo walk by giving you guys some information beforehand. This photo walk took place during the current COVID-19 situation that's still going on. And when I went downtown, I, I, my goal was to be very intentional, to social distance, to stay far away from people and touch as few surfaces as possible, which I felt like would be very easy to do. I, I'm not gonna be rubbing my hands on much things. I'm not going to bathrooms. I'm not getting food, that sort of thing. I'm staying away from people. Now, since I went on this photo walk, I've heard two different doctors say that this is now airborne to some degree, that, and that um, it can be in the air for up to three hours after it is cast into the air. But everybody else is still saying, including doctors, is still saying that it's surface bound. So I don't really know the answer. And considering I don't know the answer, and how quickly we're learning about this thing and how little we still know about this thing. Uh, I don't think I should have, well, at this point I would not have, I would not go downtown and do another photo walk. But I did not have the information when I embarked on this photo walk. I'm just saying this because I think we should all be very careful. Um, but with that said, here's the photo walk. And then after the photo walk, considering it was very short and I found very few people, I want to um, share with you some other work that a photographer, one of my friends, has been working on during this COVID-19 situation. Enjoy. Hi friends, welcome to another photo walk. I'm in a remarkably empty parking garage. I'm gonna guess this has something to do with COVID-19. I haven't been downtown and I haven't been on a photo walk since this thing really picked up. So I'm curious to see how it's gonna work for me today. Downtown is probably going to be very empty. The escalators are not running. Wow, it's so quiet. Don't worry, I'm going to be social distancing. I don't plan to be particularly near anybody. I'm not planning on having any conversations with anybody unless somebody wants to have a conversation with me. Or I see somebody that looks like I would like to have a conversation with them. Even then, I'll probably give them an elbow tap. Now, today has been a particularly interesting day because we had an earthquake in Salt Lake City this morning. It was a 5.7. I was about 20 miles from the epicenter in my apartment uh, and it was quite a rumble. Let's just say I've never put on my pants so fast. As far as I know, nobody has been hurt. There was, there was some damage to some buildings downtown. The airport, was, which was particularly close to the epicenter, uh, shut down. We had a big water leak. And then um, the air traffic control tower wasn't working, I heard. That's pretty important for a functional airport. Another crazy thing that happened is that the angel on top of the LDS temple, uh, there's a large LDS population here in Salt Lake City, if you don't know. The angel on top, it's a golden angel, his name is Moroni, and he lost his trumpet. It fell off. <laughs> We've been having aftershocks all day today. Uh, the whole earthquake situation is really made the day have an odd tone to it. Anyway, let's take some photos. I'm gonna see what I can swing. Camera settings. I've been shooting indoor today, so I gotta move my camera settings around. Let's see. All right, let's go. Let's go all the way up to 2.8. So 100. My shutter speed does not have to be at a 50th. Very good. Not too bright today. Wow. There's nobody on the platform. There's one lady down there. <laughs> Nobody's getting off. <laughs> Can't even open the doors. All right. Guys, it is dead today. So these are restaurants. It's about dinner time. This would normally have some energy at this point in the day.
Okay, I feel like I'm starting to get some traction. I've been a little bit nervous this entire photo walk. I'd be interested to know how your town is doing during this COVID-19 era. I know that much of Asia, Europe, and the United States of America is hit pretty hard by this, but I'm curious about places like South America. I haven't, I haven't learned too much about what's going on there. If it looks like I'm walking in circles right now, it's because I am. I'm gonna grab this one with my iPhone. I need a wider angled lens. A wider angle might actually be useful today to capture the vast expanse of nothingness that is happening. I've never noticed that building before. You know when you've never noticed a thing and then you notice a thing and then you're like, whoa, I've never noticed that thing. And you're like, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> We're gonna what take a photo. Next to James? This is a very friendly father and daughter. The father started talking to me. He was curious about what I was up to. I told him that I'm a street photographer and I take photos of interesting people on the street and he very quickly said you can take a photo of us and I did not pass up that offer. Oh, uh, let's see. I mean the temple's there, there's um, what else do we have Let's just here? Let's just walk this way yeah, for a let's second. Yeah, let's go this way. Yeah. So you're a street photographer. Indeed. And uh, where do you publish your work? Uh, on Instagram. Cool. Share them on there and then... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna go to my work. It's right there. Um, where do you work? I work at this building here. It's at a it's a farmland investment firm. Ah, okay, it's okay. Just yeah. In this uh, Wells Fargo building here. Gotcha. Yeah. There's my work. Yeah. My work. This is a good spot for a portrait. Let's put you right here. Yeah. Or actually, right here. This will be good. Yeah, you like it there? Yeah, I appreciate it. No, of course. Appreciate you. Let me take a photo. J James. James. Yeah. James. What was your name? Jake. Jake. And L. Okay, great. All okay, right. and you have to give us your handle, James. Okay, we'll do. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, three, two, one. All right, hang and tight James, for me. I'll be honest, her, her hair's, I'm gonna pop her hood out. There. Oh, beautiful. My hair used to be that long. Yeah. And right. it's red. It's good. It's beautiful. <laughs> we love redheads. Yeah. Three, two, one. Awesome. Well, thank okay, you guys. James. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Yeah. So nice if you to want to, you. you got a phone with you? Yeah, I'll pop it in there. Let All right. Let me, oh, sorry, y'all. James, oh, it, it did read. James read. Yeah, whenever telemarketers call my house, yeah. they say James Reed, and I don't understand why. It doesn't make any sense to me. You guys have a good day. You did it. Stay safe. <laughs> bye. Say bye to James. Look out for earthquakes. Yeah, stay safe, <laughs> stay healthy. Yes, Social you too. Distance, but we're smiling. That's right, that's right. Well, they were abundantly friendly. That really livened up my day. Perhaps that guy was a raging extrovert, and he was feeling a little bit oppressed by the social distancing that we're all taking part in, and he needed a friend. Hi. After this photo walk, I was on the highway coming home, and I saw an accident. This accident involved one car, a minivan. I saw smoke, and I saw a minivan repeatedly bouncing off the wall. So I pulled off to the right side of the road, they were on the left side of the road, to see if everyone was going to be okay. I was anticipating the minivan flipping or, you know, popping back into the, the highway and getting hit by another car, but they stopped on the side of the road. So I stopped and this is what happened. This car just wrecked into the side of the highway here. Make sure everybody's okay. Luckily, it didn't bounce back into the highway. He's okay. He said he's good. He gave me a thumbs up. Wow, dude. That was nuts. Hi. Okay, now I want to share with you some work from my friend Jeremy Cohen. He is a New York City-based photographer on Instagram. Incredibly talented fellow. Whenever I look at his photos, and a lot of photographers don't do this for me, by the way. Whenever I look at his photos, they make me sick. They're so good. He is so creative. He's up to some very interesting things. And I wanted to talk about a project that he has, uh, well, two projects that he has embarked on during this COVID-19 situation. One of them was a collection of photos that he had taken in the past that he repurposed and reshared on his social platforms around appreciation for the people who are working and they're still running around in public while people like 
me, for example, are um, very blessed to be able to do their work from home. So he posted on Instagram, he said, police officers, delivery people, garbage men, dog walkers, emergency personnel, and all of the heroes working around the clock to keep things running while we stay home. I want to say thank you. And with these lovely words, he shared some well-executed photos, including a portrait of a police officer with many a freckle upon his face, my brother. Following that, we have a portrait very similar to the previous one of a pilot. And then we have a portrait that lets in a bit more of the environment of a male person doing his job. And one of the things I like about this photo is that he was able to capture a bit more context in the environment. This is actually hard to do in the moment a lot of times. I'm very impressed by this. Another tight portrait of a construction worker, another portrait of a, I'm gonna guess she's a bus driver in her element once again, a beautiful inclusion of environment once more. And then we have a dog walker doing her thing, three dogs. And then finally we have a very creative shot of a UPS driver with his truck in the background and a box in his hand. It makes me sick. These are fantastic photos. And it also looks like he shot with a rather long focal length for most of these as well. You know I like those long focal lengths. Next we have another project that he started working on after social distancing went into full effect in New York City. He started taking uh, videos and then photos of people on their rooftops from his balcony. So this is what the post says, roof culture during quarantine part one. The culture of roof activity in New York is changing and this time of social distancing. My Brooklyn apartment building towers over every other building in the neighborhood, which I like to brag about as a short person who's never experienced this feeling. He is a bit short. From <laughs> I love you, Jeremy. From my high floor window, I see new, a whole new canvas. I started taking iPhone clips of people on their roof working out, doing yoga, reading, meditating, working, working out. Again, but more working out, I suppose. It's just lots of working out. Eating and napping. Everyone following my IG story seemed to be invested in each update of roof activity I was posting. Every time I look out my window, I see new people doing new and different things. To take this idea to the next level, I needed a zoom lens. I pitched this project to my friends at B&H Photo, and the next day they lent me a 100 to 400 millimeter Sony Alpha lens which is very exciting. I'd love to play with one of those. And out of this, we have some very creative and well-composed long lens photos, such as this one of this fellow doing some laptop work outside because he was probably tired of being inside. We have a fellow sitting on a roof, lots of compression, other buildings in the background, tons of context. A person sitting down at a picnic table with another person, and that person seems to be taking a, a powerful nap very powerful nap. Another person on their roof, a person doing yoga on her roof, and then a person working out, and then a tighter photo of that same person working out, lovely facial expression. And finally, one of my favorites out of the bunch, a guy on uh, his roof playing guitar with loads of buildings compressed on top of him in the background. The primary reason why I wanted to share these photos with you guys today is because Jeremy is very thoughtful and talented towards thinking story first when it comes to photos. He's not just interested in picking up his camera and going to play with it. He has he has a vision in mind for, for something that he's trying to share with the world. And starting from that place leads him to create incredibly compelling content. A lot of times it's easy to pick the lower barrier to entry story to tell, the one that's not going to take as much effort. As a street photographer, I struggle with this. Street photography is the lowest barrier to entry form of photojournalism out there, which is why I love it. The problem is, is it's really easy to be complacent with the stories that you're going to tell for people. You're, you just kind of go out and wait for something to happen. This is very intentional work based around something that's currently happening in the world. And so you end up with powerful context to package these photos in and deliver them to people. And I think that's fantastic. Great work, Jeremy, well done. But with all of that said, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment them below. I will be stuck inside for a little while, it looks like, so I might be doing some more inside videos. I think I wanna talk about other photographers who have been creating interesting work during this time. Uh, but if you like this video, if you hit the like button, I would really appreciate it. 
And if you really like this video, hit the subscribe button. I would also really appreciate that. I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye.